An organism is a system that has evolved over time with different notions of systems. These systems can be logico mathematical, mechanical, or thermodynamic. Logical systems are coherent sets of propositis, while mechanical systems remain stable throughout variations of objects. Mechanical systems, like the solar system, are based on a fixity or equilibrium and are linked to reversible time. Theoretical systems, such as steam or combustion engines, chemical, electrical, and turbine engines, create movement and circulation through reservoirs and temperature differences. The second law of thermodynamics accounts for the impossibility of perpetual motion as energy dissipates and entropy increases. From this point on, time is endowed with a direction and is irreversible, drifting from order to disorder or from difference to the dissolution or dissolution of a homogeneous mixture. Philosophers and psychologists were often averse to this new development, wishing for the motor to never stop. However, Freud aligned himself with these findings, adopting a topology similar to Maxwell and listing, and an energy theory based on thermodynamics. There are three types of systems, logico-mathematical, mechanical, and thermodynamic. These systems all have closure, forming the partitioning of a given universe. The third type is isolated, closed, meaning no flow of matter or circulation crosses its walls. Furthermore, philosophical discourse has moved from addressing direct questions of matter and life to addressing social sciences, language, and texts. 19th century thermodynamics focused on motors and systems, with energies originating from the entropic scale. Communication theory introduced concepts like information, noise, and redundancy, which were linked to thermodynamics. Information was shown to be a form of negentropy, and these energies were of a different order than macroscopic scale. Information theory was considered the daughter of thermodynamics, and theorizing began about everyday activities like reading, writing, and signal transmission. Theoreticians of information theory use means inherited from macroscopic physics, resulting in the development of communication acts. It became clear that a store of information could drift from disorder to disorder, and an isolated, closed system could be a language pocket. This led to the concept of living organisms, which are hypercomplex systems that receive, store, exchange, and give off energy and information. These systems are not in equilibrium, but rather in a temporary state of imbalance. Subject to the irreversible time of the second law, the living organism should be regulated by a thermodynamics of open systems, which has been developing over the past 10 years, providing a complex theory for this state of imbalance. The living system is a homeoretic system, characterized by its instability and instability. It is a river that flows and remains stable despite its instability. Like a river, in a river, the fluvial basin is stable in its flux and passage, but slowly destroys the solid basin. This system carries energy, information, knowledge of entropy and negentropy, order and disorder. The organism is both a seresis and a diuresis, defined from a global perspective. The organism is a barrier of braided links that leaks like a basket, but can still function as a dam. All times converge in this temporary knot, including the drift of entropy, wear and aging, 
exhaustion of initial redundancy, time turning back on feedback rings, the quasi-stability of eddies, the conservative invariance of genetic nuclei, the permanence of a four, the erratic blinking of aleatory mutations, the implicit filtering out of all non-viable elements, and the local flow up steam towards negentropic islands. The living organism is a sheaf of times, woven out of all the different times that our intellects subjects to analysis, or our habits, distinguish, or our spatial environment tolerates. The passage discusses the complex functions of organisms, from the global to the local level, and then to organs, tissues, cells, and molecules. It is argued that the complexity of organic systems functions like a set of chemical reactions, with approximately a thousand different reactions occurring in a homothermal environment at high temperatures. These movements and transformations generate background noise, which is tremendous and difficult to perceive. The observer in this context is the observer or observers in question, who perceives the noise generated by the complex. Homothermy is an example of homeresis, as it is more fragile and dependent on the environment, its own species, and others. This makes the homothermal system more dependent on the environment and other species. The origin of language can be traced back to our submersion in a furious ocean, where we are the voice of the hurricane and thermal howl. We have eyes and ears to avoid seeing ourselves and hear ourselves, observing almost nothing. The process of integration leads to the description of levels of integration, such as Russian dolls, or interlocking objects. The cybernetic model temporarily allows us to imagine links between these levels, from molecular activity, to the organization of cells, tissues, and organs. The next level in the interlocking series receives, manipulates, and generally integrates the information background noise couple, given off at the preceding level. Recent studies have allowed us to elucidate the answer to this question by examining the function of ambiguity, which results from noise when the observer changes their point of observation. This discovery is valid for all levels and runs through the system of integration. The question of the origin of language arises from the observation of the observer who is connected to noise and information phenomena. The observer has a special listening instrument, made up of internal sensations, or intropathy, proprioceptivity, or synesthesia, which functions in relation to signals from the vagus sympathetic system. The instrument perceives signals under the categories of pleasure and pain, receiving and emitting them. The final couple, the only one to be perceived, is the last translation or rectification of the original physical couple of information, background noise. The successive levels of organic integration must always function as languages, with each level functioning as a filter or rectifier. The multiple integrated system can be considered as a series of transformations that effect a move from the noise information couple to the meaning obstacles, couple, and finally to meaning. This hypercomplex apparatus gives a meaning to the Shannon couple, which can only be dealt with as long as it has no meaning. The central problem of information theory is resolved automatically by living organisms, which can be described as apparatuses producing language from noise and information. The theory of changes in sign is valid at the most elementary levels, such as a cell containing a nucleus, 
cytoplasm, membranes, and organelles. This process of reversal at their boundaries is shared by embedded systems, such as repression and repression. The unconscious gives way from below, becoming a series of interlocking boxes that form the organism or body. Each level of information functions as an unconscious for the global level bordering it, with the noise information couple reversed and decoded or deciphered by the subsequent system. The last black box remains the din of energy transformations, which are stripped of all meaning, like a set of pure signals or aleatory movements. These packages of chance are filtered by the subtle transformer constituted by the organism, and they come crashing at our feet in the forms of eros and death. The traditional view of the unconscious would seem to be the final black box, with its own language in the full sense. Beyond it, we plunge into the cloud of meaningless signals. In psychoanalysis, categories or common functions could be rewritten in terms of the new organon, which maintains the advantage of being both a physics of energy and a theory of signals. For a machine, the information account is negligible in relationship to the energy account, while for a living organism, both accounts are on the same scale. The theoretical reconciliation between information theory and thermodynamics favors and advocates the practical reconciliation between funds of knowledge that exploited signs and those that exploited energy displacements, as Freud's first dream. The ambiguity function in the organism's system resolves an earlier difficulty by reversing the temporal sheaf, background noise, the major obstacle to messages, assumes an organizational function, but is equivalent to thermal disorder. Its time is that of increasing entropy, pushing the system toward death at maximum speed. Entropic irreversibility also changes direction and sign. Negentropy goes back upstream. The body is an extraordinarily complex system that creates language from information and noise, with as many mediations as there are integrating levels. By reversing the ambiguity function, things naturally converge. Either the observer is submerged in signal exchanges or observes the global set of exchanges. From this moment on, Everything occurs as if Freud had intuited the subsequent development of thermodynamics into information theory. The realms of the subjective and objective are no longer at odds. The observer as object, the subject as the observed, are affected by a division more stable and potent than their antique separation. They are both order and disorder. There is only one type of knowledge, and it is always linked to an observer, submerged in a system, or in its proximity. This observer is structured exactly like what he observes. His position changes only the relationship between noise and information, but he himself never faces these two stable presences. In conclusion, the organism combines three varieties of time and its system constitutes a temporal sheaf. Knowledge is at most the reversal of drifting, which is complexity itself, which was once called being.